Japanese koi are one of the most beautiful ornamental fish in the world and we often refer to them as Nishiki Goi. In this video you will get to know what it takes to breed, select and grow out Nishiki Goi to unbelievable beautiful creatures that can reach over 1 meter in length. Learn to know what it takes from a breeder, everything about koi in just 9 minutes. The ultimate goal in the life of a Japanese koi breeder is to create Nishiki Goi that can compete at the highest possible level on koi shows. They want to do anything to select and grow out only the best koi. They really live for perfection, and some of them do succeed in that very well. Growing koi that become so beautiful that they will be awarded with the grand champion prize at a koi show. That actually is the class of koi that can become very expensive, up to thousands or even multiple hundred thousand dollars for a single koi. It is not that simple and many steps have to be performed very well by the breeder. In this video you will get to know all of these steps. And it all starts with the breeding process. The first step in the life of a Japanese koi is to hatch. And that can only happen after a successful spawning. For most of the breeders in Japan today, this actually is a manual step. They use artificial breeding to have more control over the number of offspring, the parent koi that will be combined and also the number of koi that will be able to hatch. The female koi will be prepared to extract the eggs. And it is crucial here that no water gets mixed up with the eggs and for that reason all the towels are used there. Large female koi will produce over 100,000 eggs. And it will only take a couple of minutes before all these eggs are released. And that is due to a relaxant that is added. Imagine that what you see right now are at least 100,000 koi fish. Well, not yet of course, but soon they will be. First we have to mix the sperm from a male koi with the eggs. And this is done manually, so it is actually possible to combine multiple male parent koi with the eggs of a single female. The breeder just makes multiple balls and adds some eggs into it, mixing then the different balls of eggs with sperm from different males. The mixtures can be placed in different containers, and when the eggs hatch, the koi from different parents are all separated from each other, making it very easy for the breeder to determine which combinations of parents do well or where he needs to improve. The mixtures are carefully divided over the spawning brushes. A nice detail to know here is that the eggs actually become sticky when it comes in contact with water, so they settle themselves and stick to the brushes. The eggs will only need about 4 days with a water temperature of 25 degrees or 5 days when the water temperature is 20 degrees, and then there will be massive amounts of baby koi swimming around. They are all so small that you can barely see that these fish are koi. And two or three extra days later, these baby koi have to be transported to their growing pots. It might be hard to imagine, but the best place for baby koi to live and grow in are these muddy, green looking ponds. In just a matter of time, about three to four weeks, the koi will be around one and a half inch in length. They will start to show their colors and their patterns, making it able for the breeder to see which koi have potential and which ones are not that good. These ponds are located on the sides of the mountains in Japan. The same type of ponds that are used to grow rice. A totally different purpose, but imagine that is actually how it all started. The reason why these mud ponds are doing so well is due to the mineral rich soil, together with the very soft water conditions and high water temperatures. Perfect conditions for the baby koi to stay healthy and grow at a rapid pace. Until the time comes that the koi are big enough to be selected by the breeder. The koi now have visible patterns at a length of about 1.5 inch. They usually are around 4 weeks old here. This selection process, called the sambetsu, is the most important step for the breeder. Even though the koi are so small, it is already possible to see which koi have more potential than others. Every single koi will have to be netted using large drag nets gently from one to the other side of the pond, selecting all of them, and only the ones that pass the selection are released back in the pond. The criteria used here are strict. First attention is paid to the fins, tails, eyes, gill plates and body line. Is everything as it should be on the koi? 
And secondly, most important is to look at the patterns of the koi. Every variety has its own selection criteria. For Kohaku for example, the red should not cover the entire head, and the pattern needs to be visible with both red and white in it. Entirely white or entirely red koi will not be selected. In this stage it is normal that only about 5 or 10 percent, or maybe a little bit higher, are selected. Actually this selection is a crucial step. Since the breeder used artificial breeding, the number of offspring is way and way higher, far much more of what would have happened in nature. If the breeder does not thin out his number of koi, it will result in problems due to overstock growing ponds, diseases and eventually resulting in death. Two or three weeks later, when the koi became about 2 to 2.5 two inch in length, the koi will be selected again. Not only did the koi grow, but their patterns became more visible as well. Now the breeder can actually really start to look at good indications of the pattern. Of course, depending again on the variety. And if we take Kohaku again, the breeder will now start to pay attention to if the pattern really has more potential. Is it nicely laying on the back of the fish? And does the red not go below the lateral line? Does the red stay nicely between the eyes? Or does it leave some white space around the nose? There are many more technical aspects regarding the pattern that are now taken into account. The ones that have passed the selection will again be released back in the mud pounds, growing further and further in the rest of the year. For some varieties this process is happening up to 5 or even 6 times in only the first year. After a full growing season and a lot of effort that has been put into their koi, it is time for the Ikeyage. For koi that are in their first year, this is usually around September. This is the moment of truth for the breeder. How have their koi developed over the last year? The baby koi from this year are now at least 4 or even 5 inches and will be brought indoors. While the koi from last year that have been released in the ponds after winter are also harvested. Usually this is happening in October. These one and a half year old koi can now already have reached lengths of about 15 up to 25 inch in length. That also depends a bit on the variety and the conditions. Usually for these one and a half year old koi, when their quality is higher, the breeder will first identify the sex of each koi and keep them in separate tanks. Female koi can become larger and therefore are more valuable for the breeder when they will sell their koi to clients around the world. At the end of the growing season, Koi will show their finest and best qualities. In autumn, after the harvesting is performed, there are already some competitions and koi shows that are held. Breeders and collectors from all around the world will come together here, where the best koi in their class, size and variety will compete against each other. The highest possible award is the Grand Champion, a true crowning on the world of a breeder. During the winter, many koi enthusiasts will travel to Japan. This is the season for koi dealers and store owners to buy and select the collections that they will bring overseas. They have one goal and that is to bring home a nice collection that their own customers are willing to buy. Sometimes the customers have even provided them with requests from specific varieties or patterns that they are searching for. Back home the koi will be placed into a quarantine period for about 4 to 6 weeks, purely for safety purposes and to prevent that the koi will get ill. And a few weeks later the koi will be sold and brought to clients, arriving at their final destination where a koi hobbyist will most likely do their uttermost best to let the koi grow larger and stay in a perfect condition.